What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Cork Stats here on the Mayo Media Network on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Don't be shy to get up in the comments and let Mr. Mayo know how good of a job I'm doing. I'm your host, the big dude with the big mouth from the Big Apple, John Legaza. That's Big Johnny Stud coming to you worldwide from Brooklyn, New York, as always, getting you ready for the upcoming 2022 MLB Fantasy Baseball season. That and a whole lot more, man. Make sure to check out that playlist on the Mayo Media Network. That baseball playlist is just crazy right now. I've been doing two videos a week, and they're starting to pile up, and I'm really, really happy with the way the library is coming out. It's pretty diverse, but all of the arguments are coming out as comprehensive as I can make them. Getting better at this video thing, or at least I think I am. Welcome back, everyone. Like I said, today's topic of conversation is actually a response to a listener recommendation or request, and it's Seattle Mariner outfielder Mitch Hanniger. He had a monster season last year. His AD P right that average draft position has not really reflected it and this follower was wondering you know if we're buying it or if maybe this is just an inefficiency in the market knowing when you come here to cork stats you get the nuance you get the context you get all that stuff man death taxes sun rising in the east setting in the west and the big dude up before the crack of dawn to bring you the fastest show in mlb anywhere let's begin as always with hanniger who's coming in like i said adp 121 that's outfielder 31 so even in a 15-team league that puts him at the top of the OF3 categories, let's see if we can justify that cost, shan't we? Let's start with the tail of the tape as always. Oh, I was talking about that video production, a little bit of custom graphics there. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Last year, Hanniger had a monster year. Keep an eye on that 157 game, 691 plate appearances because we're going to circle back to that. Hanniger has a bit of a narrative for missing time, but that, yeah, that was in the past. Once you play 157 games, hard for me to leave you as an injury risk. Predicting injuries is very tough. You got the counting stats up on the screen. Don't need to repeat them. 210 ribbies and runs is excellent. 485 slug with an 804 OPS, 232 ISO. That's your rate of extra base hits. All excellent. 340 Woba, 120 WRC+. Plus. The expected stats all validating the production. We saw a 258 expected BA, 488 expected slug. Over to discipline we go. If you're new to my work, I like to break up hitters and teams when we're handicapping into compartmentalized baskets. So number one stat kind of tips the scale. We always want to be proactive and not reactive. So that's your counting stats. We go to discipline, elevation, and batted ball quality. That's my template. Think of it as the shredder, except mine doesn't suck. Disciplinary basket is average. Not great, but not bad. You got to remember, we do have a power hitter on our hands. 24K to 8% walk again. Not terrible. The chase rate right around average. Swinging strike rate a bit worse than average, but again, those things are palatable if you could hit upwards of 40 home runs. He is a fly ball hitter, which we like. Something we'll get into again. And the batted ball stats are just crazy. 45% hard hit rate via stat cast. 435 expected Woba on contact. He had 58 barrels last year all of a sudden that 39 home runs looking like it could be a repeat or at least like I said the word of the day being validated let's dive into the disciplinary baskets as I mentioned before for the audio only listeners I do recommend you get over to YouTube and see it but I will do my best to describe it I have here up the rolling average for Mitch Hanniger that's his K rate along with the swinging strike rate I'm going to get into just why next to his swing percentage profile if you see the K rate oscillate right around average, which again is fine, it doesn't top out too high, is never going to be too low. So we can expect that average K rate to stick. What I want you to look at is the relationship between the K rate and the swinging strike rate. These things are moving together, which makes sense. But when you combine that piece of info I just gave you with the swing profile, what you see is this is a sign of aggression because Hanniger has such excellent batted ball quality we want him to go after it we want him to be swinging at pitches look at the zone he's not really chasing much i mentioned the chase rate it's you know average not terrible and you see that kind of manifested in the swing profile on the right so we're okay with the k percentage it's been pretty consistent when we see why it's because he's getting more aggressive with the pitches he likes he's a major pull hitter so of course he's going to favor all those inside stuff if you offer it to him inside he's going to offer back which again we want him to so the disciplinary basket 
again, is not great, but I do think it's palatable and I do think it is what it is. So I don't think we have to worry about it really worsening because of the swing profile. As I mentioned, let's hop over into elevation again. On the left, you see an overlaid rolling averages. Don't be intimidated by these things, people. That's what I'm here for. We're going to walk you through it so you understand it. Be careful of people that just read stats while looking for nuance and the context for, again, that key word validation. What you see here is the fly ball rate from Mitch Hanniger overlaid with his home runs. The reason I put those up is you cannot deny those two working together. Now, yes, that's partly intuitive, but there is a trend developing here. We've seen that fly ball rate really trend upwards and take the home runs with it because of the batted ball quality. And over on the right, you could just see that spray chart, all those barrels. And when he gets lift, you're talking about destruction from Hanniger. The reason we wanted to highlight this is with the gains in fly ball rate we've seen, over month over month in this rolling game shows us this is something that i think is going to sustain keep that in mind let's get into the last basket which is batted ball quality another little fancy custom chart from the fine people at the mlb moving average handle that would be me make sure you subscribe you know follow me over there on the bluebird app let's get into the batted ball quality versus the league average so in blue you'll see hanniger on Gray on the right hand side, you will see the league average. Hanniger's 351 X Woba, 435 expected Woba on contact are far, far better than average and even way better than the outfielders going near him. You see the hard hit rates really just jumping off the page, much better than average. The bow rate, 50% better than average. The blast rate, more than 50% better than average. All the way across the board, the power metrics are legitimate for Mitch Hanniger. So I think at this point, we have to pose the question, why have people kind of forgotten about him? And I think partly it's because of that health narrative that I said. I mean, I, I don't know, there was a bit of a spotty injury past. Uh, he had a, a, a really rather kind of touchy injury uh, downtown. If you want, you could look that one up. But the point is they're kind of wonky and not like structural and injuries that I'm worried about repeating. So I think anybody tacking Hanniger with an injury narrative, I think that might be misplaced. Again, 157 games, almost 700 played appearances. He played every single day. So if he's going to play every single day and he's shown more lift and we know the batted ball quality right up there is excellent. What should we expect? Well, the best place to start is with the pros. Let's get over to the steamer projections. Another fancy overlay from the big dude. Oh, man. I, 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 I'm just not sure I'm seeing it here. So, if again, if you're just on audio only, the steamer projections, which, you know, are excellent. I'm not here to demean them, but it is my job to disagree them if I can validate just why. So, they have them for a cold, full complement of games and plate appearances. A 244 average, which would be a step back. Although, I'm not really sure I'm seeing that either. We know the XBA is very good, and I think the disciplinary basket is where it is. So, I don't think getting the 255, 260 again is out of the question. They have them for 34 home runs, which I guess I can see. Although, I think, again, with the fly ball rate increasing as we've seen that trend moving up and it being so directly related to home run and power output, I think that number at 34 might be shortchanged a bit. And because of that, the runs and ribbies from Steamer are shortchanged a bit as well at 87 and 83. So I think I'm a little bit higher than the field. Uh, you know, I'm higher than the projection field really across the board here because, because they're giving him the 660 PAs. If they were not and they were worried about health, I'd be disagreeing there that the counting stats will come with it. Where I'm not agreeing with Steamer at all is the rates here. I believe if we get 660 plate appearances, we're going to get closer to the 40 home runs we saw before, which would get us closer to the 100 RBIs that we saw. And again, I think we'll get you closer to the 100 runs that we saw last year as well. Though, if I were looking for regression from last year's stats, it'd probably be there. Though, Mariners up-and-coming team, they're doing a lot of things well. They're going to compete. They may not even be done adding. You have a, you know, Kelnick back with the team with a full year of experience. I think he is going to bounce back in a major way. They're still sitting on Julio Rodriguez. The point being, this lineup is not even fully set. And I think that being part of the calculus for counting stats may be where Steamer is shorting him as well. So I, I think in conclusion, I think I've laid out why, I mean, easily, Hanniger is worth his draft spot at 121 
if you're buying the projections and if you're buying what I'm selling and you think with the flattened disciplinary basket combined with an increase in fly balls in the relation we've seen to those fly balls and the sustained batted ball quality we've seen that I think Steamer might be on the low end here. I know some of the other projection systems have them a bit higher. I think they have them up at closer to 38 home runs and then 90 and 90, which is where I'm at. So I'll probably concede the 34 home runs. can be hard to predict home runs, not the 34 short, but given the full complement of plate appearances that the projection systems do project, I think the rate stats are a little bit low, and I think the counting stats, I should say, are a little bit low, and I think we're going to get a bit more than that. So... Give me Hanegar all day. If he's healthy and he's going to be in the top of that lineup, he plays every single day. The discipline is not great, but it's not worsening. The elevation basket is improving. The batted ball quality is awesome. And I think Hanegar is an excellent spot to go for home runs and counting stats with a batting average that may not be great, but should not kill you. I'm higher than the 244 from Steamer. So give me Hanegar, especially in a scenario where you drafted the lesser power categories earlier. Like if you have a Trey Turner, let's say, who I think could hit, you know, 28 or 30 runs. I don't think he could hit 40, where you may want to back that up. Or let's say you drafted a pitcher early. You drafted Garrett Cole in the first round or Corbin Burns. Keep an eye on Mitch Hanegar. I would even be willing to jump him just a little bit to make sure you get him because he could give you elite power production. And if the ball kind of bounces the right way, you may even get a sniff of average. And if he's at 265, 38, and 210 combined like we saw last year with maybe a chip-in steal or two, you've got yourself a value. So thank you so much for sticking around with this episode of Cork Stats here on the Mayo Media Network. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And most definitely, get up in the comments. I will talk about whatever you want. We're doing player breakdowns, player comps, rankings, and you know I love the deep pitching dives. One last thing, cross your fingers and root for your boy, Big Johnny. I was nominated for Baseball Article of the Year by the Fantasy Sports Writers Association. I am extremely flattered, and just being a finalist is a win, but we want to close that deal. So all positive thoughts, positive vibes only my way. Thanks again, everybody from Big Johnny and everybody at the Mayo Media Net. Remember, when you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck. Yo, I catch you on the flip side. Peace. We'll